And hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be doing a movie review on the 2000 classic movie, Unbreakable, directed by the one and only, the irreplaceable, the infamous, notorious M. Night Shyamalan. So, uh, yeah. I watched Split a couple years ago. I was super impressed by it. I love the movie so much. And I was actually surprised that M. Night Shyamalan was actually capable of making another good movie. And, uh, you know, I know Glass had been out for like three months now, but um, I want to watch Unbreakable before I watch Glass because Glass is essentially the third part to the trilogy that is Unbreakable Split Glass. And so I went back in time in 2000 to watch Unbreakable. And if you know M. Night Shyamalan, you know that his movies are very polarizing. It's always either really, really bad or really good. Or, um, well, there are a couple of movies that he made are just probably in the middle somewhere, but still. His filmography is everywhere. He had made movies like The Sixth Sense, The uh, Split, Signs, and uh, he also made movies like The Happening, the, the Last Airbender, Lady in the Water, and After Earth. Jeez, After Earth? And it's all from the same director. But since Quentin Tarantino named this movie as one of his favorites, you know, I, I am fully convinced that I have to watch it. If Quentin Tarantino says it's good, it's gotta be good. So uh, yeah, Unbreakable is essentially a comic book movie. It's not necessarily DC or Marvel or anything. It's M. Night Shyamalan. It's not based on a comic book, but it's more like inspired by comic books and um back then in 2000 there aren't really that many comic book movies the only few comic book movies that were released before that time are the batman movies and and the superman movies and the batman movies aren't even like christopher nolan movies or the dceu ones they're all way way after unbreakable all the Batman movies and Superman movies before Unbreakable are usually just for fun, are usually kind of childish, they're usually kind of freaky, and people know that, and people enjoy it, nonetheless. And then we have Unbreakable, uh, a superhero movie. But it's just so subtle, so somber, and actually to some degree, kind of dark and kind of depressing. It's a completely new take on the genre of superhero films and it's so ahead of its time it's actually mind-blowing and um, I just really really love how M. Night Shyamalan pays homage to comic books not by making like another Superman or Batman movie or maybe a Marvel like uh, like an Avenger movie or uh, maybe X-Men no he has to write his own. So as for the plot, David Dunn is a middle-aged man with a wife and a son. He has a pretty average job and his life is pretty mediocre, pretty depressing actually. He wakes up every morning and feels this sadness because he's not really doing what he's meant to do but he doesn't quite know what is it that he's supposed to do. He doesn't quite know who he is and what he is capable of and then one day there's this train and um and all passengers died all of them died it was destructive it was very lethal and the only survivor is david dunn not a single bone cracked not a single scar not a single cut completely unbreakable and 
that's when he started to suspect that maybe he has superpowers, but at first he thought it was luck, but it wasn't until another man came up to him and tell him about all these things about about people finding out about their superpowers. And this man is Mr. Glass. And Mr. Glass is portrayed by Samuel L. Jackson. Great performance. And he suffers from this sickness. It's like osteoporosis or something. I forgot the full name of the, of the illness. But his bones are, are so fragile and so weak. If he slips and falls like a lot of his bones are going to be cracked. He is such a weak person. But he's really smart. And that's what makes him, uh, I guess, a special person. And he loves comic books. He likes to collect them and he likes to study them, study the art of the comics, the plot of the comics. And he started to keep on approaching David Dunn and his wife, Audrey, and telling them that David Dunn has powers. If I were David Dunn, to be honest, I would probably call the cops because that would be so annoying. It, But like, I probably wouldn't call the cops. I would just tell him to go away because calling the cops is kind of mean. But yeah, anyway, it sounds absolutely absurd in the beginning to know that you have superpowers. But after a few incidents, David Dunn started to realize that Oh my gosh, maybe it's true. Maybe he has superpowers. He's strong. He he cannot be broken. And he can he can actually vibe and tell if someone is a bad person. The only weakness that he has is water. He almost drowned when he was young and it's like his kryptonite. And that's also one of the elements uh where M. Night Shyamalan pays homage to uh, the comic books because every hero needs to have some sort of weakness and water is David Dunn's weakness. And that's basically the plot. If you, if you go into this movie expecting a lot of action, a lot of explosions, fights, and, and, and deaths, you're probably going to be disappointed because this movie is a character piece. It is more about the plot, more about the characters, more about uh, the, the the concept behind it and the experience rather than the um, the fighting, the, the punching. It was actually surprising. It is actually surprising that the cinematography of this movie is actually pretty damn good. Uh, first of all, a lot of the colors around shots involving David Dunn are green, while a lot of the Shots involving Mr. Glass are purple. It is basically their thematic color. And from all these subtle little details, you can really tell that M. Night Shyamalan really has a passion for making this movie. And there are also a lot of interesting shots in the movie that just spices things up and make things look more interesting. We get multiple upside down shots that just goes upside down. From time to time, we have all these very fluid tracking shots. A lot of long takes as well. The first shot of the movie is literally shot through a mirror. But then if you directly film a mirror, the, the camera will be shown. So I kind of don't know how they did that. Maybe they Maybe they erased the camera frame by frame, but I have no idea. And... Uh, and then, oh man, the this, this scene, the scene where Mr. Glass fell off the stairs and it's just, you know, him losing his grip of, uh, uh, you know, of the stick and then him trying to grab the, the guardrail, the shoe, and then just the entire frame flipping upside down slowly and us seeing the stairs being more distant. It's just this this really realistic first-hand experience of falling off the stairs in the most scary way. Same goes for the for the scene where David Dunn almost drowns. Uh, minor spoiler alert, but oh my gosh. Uh, it's just him on a swimming pool with like this giant piece of uh, cloth around him. 
under him and then he started to look around and started to see this piece of cloth slowly collapsing into the swimming pool and then all of a sudden it just plunges and it's just and, and it's all these very brief and very blurry shots of of you know just lights under the water and it's just it's terrifying it's terrifying we actually get to experience drowning without actually drowning while we watch the movie it's brilliant a lot of the shots here are also uh, filmed so that they would look like comic panels like something is framing them like the the lines the the comic strips and you know it's really awesome in my opinion i think M. Night Shyamalan's approach to to uh, make a comic book movie is is really realistic and really respectful, really, what's the word? Faithful. Yes, faithful. And uh, James Newton Howard's score on this thing is awesome. Even though it's not like a, a legendary movie score or anything, the theme, the, the theme song, it's almost instantly recognizable. Uh, when I watched Split, I haven't watched Unbreakable, so at the end I didn't know what, what, what was going on. But uh, yeah, if I've watched Unbreakable before Split, I would be so bamboozled at the end of Split. It would be epic. But yeah, seriously. And then that one shot when, when David Dunn climbed out of the swimming pool and he stood up and we we didn't even look at him from from the front we look at him at at the back you know as he stands up in front of the people in front of the house it's just so inspirational and with the music behind it's just this insanely uh impactful and heavy-hearted shot this shot is is truly a legendary shot, not gonna lie. And the performances are amazing. Back then, I guess, uh, Samuel L. Jackson is known for being on Pulp Fiction, and Bruce Willis is known for being on Die Hard, but both of them delivered such awesome performances. Samuel L. Jackson's performance is way more toned down, while Bruce Willis' performance is also way more toned down. I feel like the movie could have been, I guess, uh, more eventful a little bit, maybe. I guess the movie can um, have some more going on around the characters, maybe. Um, but, um, you know, these aren't complaints. These are just suggestions. I, I really don't have any complaints for this movie. Um, I love it. I love it a lot. It's... Such an inspirational movie, first of all. Second of all, it's actually a really good reflection of how people are, you know. You know, maybe, like I, I was thinking after I watched the movie, maybe it was all just a metaphor. Maybe, you know, having superpowers is, is just a metaphor for being good at something. Having talents that nobody else around you has. and And, you know, we have to you know, fully utilize those talents if we need to actually be free. And it's actually really impressive that a movie about superheroes, especially when it's released in 2000, can be just so somber. Like when when Elijah, uh, David Dunn's son, told him, maybe you have superpowers, it doesn't sound dumb at all. It doesn't sound funny or stupid at all. It sounds real. It sounds real. It sounds gripping. It sounds heavy-hearted. And I, it's actually a difficult task to make this topic sound so realistic and sound so in your face. And uh, also, I of course, I have to talk about the plot twist. Shyamalama Ding Dong. Every Shyamalan movie has a plot twist. And, you know... Spoiler alert, uh, go to the comments if you want to skip it, there's a timestamp, but uh, yeah. I'm going to be talking about the spoiler, the twist at the end, that is Mr. Glass is the villain, after all. It's the arch nemesis, after all. 
I thought it's a great twist. I like it. Um, I kind of don't like how it's revealed at the very, very, very end. But now that there are there's a sequel to the movie, it makes so much more sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a good twist. It's a good twist. Um, and I just love how, you know, at first, Mr. Glass and David Dunn were almost friends. Not at first, but like in the middle of the movie. And, um, and then at the end, apparently he is the arch nemesis the whole time. He was the one who destroyed the train. He, he was the one who set the hotel on fire. He was, he was the one who blew up the airport. He was the one. And oh, another scene that I would really like to address is, of course, the, the scene where David Dunn is almost drowning in the pool, and then there's this stick. And when David Dunn grabs it, I, I legitimately thought it was Mr. Glass who was helping him, but no. It, it was just some random teenager who, who uh, whom uh, David Dunn saved not too long ago, and... Wow, it's actually a really, really smart decision because the real people who, because the people who really cared for David Dunn for his powers and what he does are the people he saved and not Mr. Glass, not at all. It's a very subtle foreshadowing that Mr. Glass is evil, actually. So there's that. But uh, yeah, the scene where, where David Dunn had the guy in headlock. Oh, uh, wow. And, oh, yeah. And, and then the scene where be before the before he was fighting the, the, the murderer, he was at like the train station or, or maybe it was a bank. I don't know. I think it was a train station. Yeah. And, and he was just, you know, opening up his arms. And he's trying to feel everyone. He's trying to feel all the people, what they've done, all the... All the bad things they've done. And it's just so overwhelming. It's coming true. It's true. And it's not even this this jarring, weird, uh, whoa, I have superpowers, you know, suddenly it's kind of scene. It's like, it's real. It's right under my nose the whole time. I have superpowers. And now I'm finally utilizing it. It's, it's real. It's right in front of my face. And... Such a great moment. So uh, yeah, I'm saying Unbreakable is mind-blowing. And I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. A, a decent 9. I'll say that. So have you watched Unbreakable from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. Blah, blah, blah.